We're in the old graveyard here in Kilniner. One of the most historical graveyards, I suppose, in the entire country, and one of the oldest. And we're standing here at the graveside of John Kinsley, formerly of Crokin, who was cruelly slain by the bullets of the defence, uh, the Property Defence Association in the 1918 and 87 Cool Grainy evictions. Now I'll just read for you what it says on this stone here now, I hope I can see it. To the memory of John Kinster, who was cruelly slain by bullets of the Property Defence Association on the 28th of September 18 and 87, in the 64th year of his age. This monument was erected by the men of Wicklow and Wexford as a testimony of their respect for the man's Christian virtues and as an indignant protest against the cruel and injustice, cruelty and injustice of those who before God are guilty of his innocent blood. Now, in the, A in the 87 evictions, all the farmers got into conflict with the landlord, George Brook. He struck a rate that nobody was able to pay. So, in the meantime, Michael Dava had founded the Land League and through the Land League, there was a, 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 an organisation within the Land League uh, called the Plan of Campaign. And this was that t instead of paying their money to the landlord, they could pay their money, what they were prepared to pay to the landlord, pay into the Plan of Campaign. So that it would be there for them in the event of them being evicted from their homes and they'd have it there to support them. Now, I'll, I'll just concentrate on the Crokin area, but it happened all over the Cool Grainy area. In Crokin, all the families, there was about 14 families in Crokin, and they were all evicted except Michael Kavanagh. And before the evictions came off, the landlord, or his agent, Mr. Hamilton, made some sort of an agreement with Kavna that they wouldn't evict him provided he gave refuge for the, all the other evicted tenants. So that what was done anyhow and he converted all the outhouses into the yard, into living quarters and I think there was 12 families moved in anyhow, up to 70 people. And that all happened in the month of July and now as we said here this was in September and one day anyhow Mr Hamilton's crew, the local bailiff George Freeman and 16 or 17 others all came to Cavanagh's yard with an illegal document claiming that he owed them, I think it was 55 pounds and they were going to take 14 cattle in lieu of the 55 pounds if he didn't pay. So Cavanagh wouldn't pay him because they wouldn't give him, they, they wouldn't give him a, a, a receipt of the docker. So then one of the, one of the, the Hamilton's men, or Freeman's men, went to climb the gate and John Kinsley hit the gate with a fork and told him not to cross the gate. And with that there was a, a conflict arose on the hill. And, and from about a distance of six or seven feet, Fre Freeman shot John Kinsley through the bars of the gate. So he fell dead at his own son's feet. And then Freeman shouted to the, his comrades to fire another few shots and there was a volley of shots fired then anyhow. And miraculously enough, nobody else was hit. But there was one man anyhow, there was a bullet went through his head, through his hat. So he was getting close. Yeah. So anyhow, after a few minutes, everything quietened down with the new man. The man was dead, all concentration was on the dead man anyhow. And they carried him into the house where he had been living. After John was shot, he was, he, was, he was taken into the house where he lived and I got, there, was, there was medical people called in and one thing or another and they held the post-mortem on him anyhow. And 
he, 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 he went in before the local coroner and uh, there was this then, uh, Freeman was charged anyhow with his murder and the court went, uh, uh, I think it was in Wicklow as hell, Wexford or Wicklow anyhow and uh, it was a rigged jury anyhow with the result anyhow that although it was beyond any shadow of a doubt who had who had murdered John Chinsta. Uh, uh, there was no uh, prima facie case against him and he was, went free. Uh, and no one was ever prosecuted? Nobody was ever prosecuted, no, no. For this yeah, kind of murder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And any idea when this headstone was erected for...? I, I don't know, to be honest with you, no, I don't know. There's no, there's no day of his erection. So it probably it could have been, I, I, don't, I don't know, just not having a clue. It could have been 10 years, it could have been maybe only a couple of years, I just don't know. And the gate in which John was shot is still there in that yard? It is, yeah. Standing in the same place as it was the day he was shot. And the only reason it's standing there now is for historical purposes. It's not in any other use whatsoever. It had been used down the years in different places, even around the farm. It was back now to its original place, and it's just there, because where the gate is now, there was about 15 or 20 yards between that and the house where John Kinsta lived, and all that ditch has been taken away now, so you could drive in two or three combine harvesters beside the beside where the, the gate is just standing there, where the hallways was. John's family are probably living around locally still. Are Ronnie Kinsler's around? That's there are very few of them. He is, he is one, he is one great granddaughter just over, over here in Glenog. I'd be only about a mile from across the fields from us here, and he is another great granddaughter down in Mount Alexander outside of Gorey. Them would be the closest relatives now he has here in Ireland. Yeah. Apart from the only thing we've got left now is the, was the local memory again. Local, yeah, yeah. And that headstone. Yeah. And the, the, the language on the headstone, it's strong language. It is strong language, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you could understand why the language is strong? Oh, you could, certainly, yeah. A man shot down in cold blood, trying to protect home and property. Yeah. And those cool grainy evictions that went on for they didn't really resolve for decades afterwards. They didn't, no, no, they didn't. There were sporadic evictions up to 19, 19 and 7. They went on, yeah. And, 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 and one particular family up in Crokin, the Graham family, they didn't get back to their premises, to their home until 19 and 8, 21 years after they were evicted. But having said that, at least all the people in Crokin got their property back. People in other parts of the estate weren't as lucky and they didn't all get head back. Did the Kinsles get their land back? They did, yeah. They all, yeah. They did, yeah. Some people, when they were evicted, they just, some of them went overseas, American, everywhere else, and never came back. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's not that long ago, really, when you think about it. No, it's not, no. It's not, no. No, I... <coughs> I... I <coughs> I, I, I knew people, I'm sure, that some of them were born in the old houses in Cavendish Yard because they were born in that period. So if they were born in Crokin, they had to be born there. Yeah. And the houses were the houses, yeah, the I know. houses were housed during the, after, during the eviction? Pardon? Th those were the houses that their families were put up in when they were... Oh yeah, one was in family in the cow house, another was in the pig house, another was in the stable, another was in the barn. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't, most didn't go away. So, some no, 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 some didn't go away. It was, but there was quite a few of them went away, like, you know. They went, and more, some of them went to relatives and friends they had just outside the locality. You know, the family of John Kinson, now, they, they moved down to Clough. And, and, and that's, that's, that's where, that's where uh, some of his grandchildren was born. And maybe when they came back to Crokin, they were away for 10 years. If, when they came back, maybe some of his grandchildren was born in Crokin, but I know some of them definitely was born down in Clock. And I think there was more of them just born over the road from us here in Town Kyle. Yeah. 
Ja. De, de, those evictions have left a mark on the people here, haven't they? Oh, they have left a mark, yeah. But the funny thing about it, people talk very little about it. For the reason for it was now, I don't know. We're just getting back to John Kinsley here now again. The two stones here beside him are also Kinsley stones. And now we're, we're dressing up the Kinsley family at the present time. And now I'm, 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 not, I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'm prepared to bet that either his parents or his grandparents is there and other relatives of John Kinsley is there on the other one beside him. John, yeah, and, and John, John Kinsley, by the way, he was a widower, and I, I, we haven't found it out yet where his, where his wife was buried. She could be here, I don't know. I don't know how long he was widowed before he was shot. And he was 65. Yeah, when, uh, 64 in the 64th year of his life, that's what's on that there. Yeah. 64. Yeah. <laughs> so that means he was born about... 18 and 24, and he had he had a he had two sons and two daughters, and one son and one daughter married, and the other the other two didn't marry, and the son that married he had he had eight children, and the daughter had just one. And you showed me his house before there up near. No, that's correct, yeah. Yeah, and you said there were RIC men in it, were there for a while, or...? Oh yeah, RIC men, yeah. The US has a barracks for, for a couple of years, I don't know, maybe three or four or five years, I don't know how long, uh, after they, they've been evicted, but they were gone anyhow by 98 when Kinsas came back to it. So I don't know how long they used it for, like, you know. Yeah. So they took over the man, the dead man's house? They did, yeah. They yeah. used it as a barracks? Yeah, that's right, yeah. For their own purposes? Yeah, yeah. Any of those families, any of those men around, or those family around, those RAC men? Not now, no. There was one of them, funny enough. He, 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 he married one of the evicted tenants, and he, 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 he moved into her place, remained in Croken, and left the RIC or retired from whatever, and he spent the rest of his life in Croken. I knew the man well. Yeah. He died in. Oh, when did he die? Probably around the 60s. Yeah. Can you mention the man's name, do you mind? Oh, no problem. Abraham Story. Yeah. yeah. He was one of the young RAC men. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. He, was a, he was a cabin man. And the girl he married was Dorothy Marr. Yeah. And where were the Mars from? Cumber or where were they from? The Mars? Yeah. Oh, they were, they were in Croken, Mars that time. Yeah. There was a couple of families of Mars in Croken actually that time, yeah. 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 Isn't it strange about things turn around, stories yeah. twist, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But not in black and white. Not in black and white, no. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da